Hey, what's up everybody? This episode, we're gonna be talking about classes and objects. And no, I'm not talking about those classes from university that you skip. Pfft. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Caleb, from the past. All right, I made mistakes, but here I am today to redeem myself by sharing some information with the world. And we're gonna be talking about object-oriented programming. So this one is the absolute basics. We're not gonna be coding anything, but there should be some coding samples in this playlist as well, so just a separate video. So we're mainly focusing here on approaching classes and objects from a data structures and algorithms perspective. So if we think about data structures and what they are, and um, is that a horse? No, 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 that's just a scratch on my wall. <laughs> data structures just store information. So how does it, how, what are some examples? Well, we have arrays. And arrays get the job done, you know, they can store some numbers. But that's really simple. So maybe another solution would actually be to have an array of pointers. Then, in that situation, we could have different types. So, you know, this one might point to a number. This one might point to a string, such as Caleb. This one might point to some enumeration value or another array. You know, this could be another array over here that could be another way to represent data as well. Essentially, as our needs become more and more complex, the way we have to represent data can become more and more complex. As complexity continues to grow, the easiest solution is to use classes and objects. So this allows us to basically customize our code to fit our needs exactly rather than just having an array full of a ton of data. So the example we're going to be using throughout this video is a facility that has security cameras that we need to control and do things with all inside of our application. So we might want to create code to specifically represent cameras instead of just an array of data. So that is where classes and objects would come in. It's just an example. You can apply this to anything inside of data structures and algorithms. For example, a linked list you can have a linked list class and a node class to store data and a million other variations. But we're just gonna go through this example to learn the concepts of object-oriented programming and that'll help you get the basis figured out. So the very first thing we do is we create a class and the class is essentially a blueprint or a way to describe what a camera would look like. So typically it'll be whatever we're trying to describe with a capital letter here. And this is going to have two main pieces inside of it. It's going to have variables, or what you would say are data members, and then you're going to have functions, which in the context of object-oriented programming are known as methods. So let me write those out. Data members, and then methods which again is just an object-oriented way of saying function. It's a function to describe a specific thing dealing with cameras. So a camera might have an attribute whether or not the camera is active. It could have a serial number. These are both examples of data members. Different programming languages have different ways of representing this, but you're gonna hear words such as attributes, fields, properties, or just variables. It's just like a normal variable, but now it's going to be grouped in a container to describe a camera. And that container is known as an object. So we use this class to create a specific camera. And this is what it might look like. The way we would create this camera is by creating a variable. Often by convention, it's the same name with a lowercase c, but you can name it whatever you want. It's just a variable, it doesn't matter. And then you just say the class name with parentheses after. So that is how you instantiate an object. This process is known as instantiation. And inside of this object, we give specific values for these different variables here. So we could say true for active. And for the serial number, we give it some really meaningful serial number such as ABC123. This would describe a specific camera. 
This might be the camera inside of the closet that's pointing at the corner of the wall. I don't know why they put a camera there. That's besides the point. We could describe that in our application using an object. So the classes, these are files. They describe things. They're the blueprint. Cameras, these are instantiated during runtime. When you execute the code, you're going to create new objects, and these objects can even correlate to things in real life. The next thing on here, we have methods. So methods are just functions. An example might be activate. And in this situation, it would turn the camera on, maybe start any of its paths it has it looking, whatever it might be. So when we create that function inside of that camera class, we use it on this camera object. So the way we would use it is we would say camera dot activate. So notice it looks just like any other function call, but now we prefix it with this dot operator and the object we want to activate. So it's specifically related to this camera. Let's say we went ahead and created another camera object. We would just repeat these two lines of code. We would say something like camera two is a new camera. And then we would say camera two that activate. In this situation, the activate refers to this camera, not this camera. So notice that the class can be used to instantiate numerous cameras. So again, let's just repeat what we got. We got the data members. These are just variables. So we got the active and we have the serial number. Then we have methods. These do processing. In this case, we have activate. And what exactly does activate do? The actual processing of activate is defined in the class. So you might define this function as setting active to true. And it might even call the camera's API. So we're not going to get into the code on how to do that right now, but you could actually turn on a physical camera just by activating it in our code. So when we call activate on this camera, it's going to activate that one. When we call activate on this camera, it's going to activate this one. So it's completely specific to whatever camera it's attached to with this dot operator. Now the next thing you might want to know is these parentheses here, when we actually create a new camera, what's going on here? Well, when we create a new camera, there is a method that is called. We don't have it defined right here, but it does exist. And this method is often called a constructor. So this constructor is just a method. So here we can do any kind of processing we need to do in order to have a functional camera object. So how would you create this? Most programming languages, you just create a method that matches the class name with no return. So it looked like this camera, and then you would define the code in there. And I'm getting into like pseudo code here because it's going to be different from language to language. Inside of Python, we actually have a special method we need to use, and that is underscore underscore init, which pretty much acts as the same thing inside of Python. So let's go through an example with C sharp or Java code. It's going to look like this. And you can take data passed in here. So for example, you could take the serial number. So we'll say string serial number. And then we can assign whatever values passed in to that camera by saying this dot serial number is that serial number passed in. That's how you do something like this inside of C sharp. Very similar with Java. I just think the string would be capitalized here and you might need to use a setter method, but we're getting at another day. Don't worry about that. For Python, you would basically override underscore init and you would have to implicitly take self as an argument, but you'd also have a couple other parameters in here, specifically the serial number. And then in here, instead of saying this, you would say self dot serial number equals serial number. So that's how you would do something inside of Python.
the way you would invoke this is when you create a camera inside of C sharp, you would say new camera, similar to how you would do it in Java. And then you pass in the serial number here. And it's similar to how you do it in Python. You just leave that new off of here and it works exactly the same way. Now I wanna go through an example of classes and objects for linked lists. We're gonna get into actually doing this soon, but basically you're going to have a class for the linked list itself. And then you're going to have a class for a node. And anything specific to one node would go here. So you're going to have the data and then probably the next pointer and then anything specific to the entire linked list will go here. So you probably have a start, maybe some methods such as add or delete. And now to create linked lists and nodes, here's how you would do it. Create a variable. Linked list is a linked list here. We could create a node like so. set the node data to some value, set the start of the linked list to that node, and then we could define the add method to do more fancy things, so we could call that. So we could say linked list.add, pass in some other data such as 10, and behind the scenes it'll create a new node and set it to the next pointer here for this node here. So that's just another example of classes and objects, and I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit more in the upcoming videos. So that's just an introduction to object-oriented programming. I know it's a lot to learn on a chalkboard here, so the best way to learn this is to get hands-on with whatever programming language you are trying to learn. Check out my Python series. We got some object-oriented programming videos coming out soon, and that's all I got for right now, so stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.